He's getting the gong. I'm thinking BHP and JJBI Fi. It happens. I don't love stocks, I just trade them. My name is Richard Lee and I manage the stockradar.com.au website for you guys. Uh, Stockradar runs a quant strategy based on high probability, si high probability signals to create a trading edge. We educate members that identifying stock picks is only a small part of the trading process. We need to acknowledge that a carefully crafted methodology of managing a portfolio of stocks is what's needed to get you there. And I'm going to talk a bit about, a bit about that later on. Okay, the normal course of business, we just run through the overseas markets, look at some uh, the index, look at some stocks, and then we go on to trading tactics. Last week I talked about building the trade plan and those special ingredients you need, and this week I'm going to talk about the portfolio. Once we put those stocks together, what controls we need to have around that. So um, that's what I'm going to look at today. So firstly, let's get straight into the markets. <clears throat> okay, Dow Jones Industrial Average. Trend intact. We've had a little bit of a wobble again this week, but once again the markets recovered um, and holding. Still the uptrend's intact. You know we're still above the S1 support here, above the moving average, so we're not too concerned at this stage. And there's no huge wave of selling appearing, apart from the fact that MACD is slowing down a bit, which is normal when the when the trend slows down a little bit. So that's okay for the moment. Okay, Nasdaq. Uh, it's had a little bit of a wobble again last night, uh, but again, it's still above its average and above this uh, S1 area, this is horizontal trend, trend support that I look for. So although we've had a bit of a pullback, it happens, we get pullbacks, the market recovers. So at this stage, there's nothing untoward showing to tell me that this is going to crumble down at the moment. So in uptrend intact. Okay, let's go to Brent Crude. We've got a few things to get through today. Uh, Brent Crude... Um, has uh, tried to rally through this resistance area, but has actually failed, uh, hasn't failed. It's just slowed down a little bit last night. It's punching a bit of a hole in this level here. Um, so it's certainly working it. There's plenty of green bars here. Momentum's still in positive area, so there is hope, but this is a big level and it, it is resistance and we didn't see that selling earlier this week. So a break of $84 will we'll break up. We'll give some clean air to Brent crude if it can rise above this big level here at R01. So we keep watching that one. Copper again, still under pressure. Um, you know, it's holding this area here. We'll try and buy that up a little bit for you so you can see it a bit clearer. Um, we've got the lower highs here. We've also got some good supporting lows here. We've got a little bit of buying interest coming in down here, but whether it's enough to hold this stock at the moment, I don't know. Um, trend has slowed considerably, so there's still pressure. It's a battle uh, that has not been resolved as yet, so we're just going to wait to see what happens and see how we can hold S1 or not. Okay, the other one is gold. It's sort of wobbling lower and lower slowly as we thought. The pressure's on the downside. There's a bit of volume here. The MACD is sagging below zero, and we're looking like we're moving towards this S1, this pressure level down around 1696-1700 US dollars. So we'll just sit there and watch gold for the moment. The gold index itself is not performing too well. New crest evolution, all those stocks are making new lows at the moment, so we're, we're happy we're not there. Okay, uh, into the index itself. Again, uh, we've had a bit of a pullback this week, no problem, that's what happened. We've sort of broken this sort of uptrend line, which is not a huge concern of mine, that's just sort of like a, a sentiment line that I look for. I more look at the average and look at the horizontal lines, and they're just down here below here. So we're certainly in test mode at the moment. And this is the old 2020 high, so we'd love to be able to hold this and move back towards R1. But we'll wait and see. As we know, we're stock specific, so this is just a bit of background for you to have a look at. Um, the stock radar portfolio was up one this week to 86 stocks of 190 and uncovered. Um, the portfolios are full, the five stock is full, and the 10 stock is still full. The conservative portfolio was picked up one to eight out of 20 this week, so it's at 40%. And as far as the sectors go, we've seen a little bit of a shuffle there. Property at the top now, we've seen one just slowly but surely these property stocks have been coming into the stock big count. The banks are still up there, health is moving up there, and also diversified finance is also moving up there. There's some great stocks in that diversified finance sector. Um, as we know, which we've looked at over recent weeks. Uh, our little portfolio we're building, which I'll review again next week, um, which we started in March, it's up, up, still up 15% at the moment, and we're still holding those same stocks, uh, Washington Sol Patterson, Computer Share, Independence Gold, Car Sales, and Wise Tech. So they're all still in there, and most of them are still performing pretty well at the moment. Car Sales is a bit flat, but apart from that, things like Sol is doing well, CPU is doing well. Uh, for that, for that uh, portfolio. So that's uh, that stock. So now we're going to get into some stocks. Um, 
Firstly, I'm just going to actually no, I want to go through two other uh, um, overseas markets first. One is the Treasury note for those that are interested. Um, this is the 10 year Treasury note. People have been talking about interest rates. Well, what's happening in the interest rate market? We know it's come down an awful long way. When this goes up, interest rates are going down. When this goes up, sorry, when this goes when this goes down, interest rates are going up. So it's an inverse relationship. So we're, we're seeing this push towards higher interest rates here. Now, if we just attach a little bit of a psychology to each move off the top, first we've got a little bit of a scare here, a bit of a worry, not too concerned. And then as the market recovers, we get a little bit of hope that that's, everything's okay, a bit of complacency sets in. And this is a normal part of trading behaviour. Then all of a sudden, the sellers start to dominate again. Now we're getting a little bit scared again, and we watch S1. Then you're going to see a little bit of panic probably set in if it goes below there, and you'll start rising. So a little bit of a concern. It's going to be a concern for the equity market. Um, interest rates are so low, it doesn't matter too much, but it will cause a little bit of fear. So we'll just have to watch that for the moment. So I thought that's an interesting chart to have a look at, because certainly this, we're watching this yield rise a bit, up around 1.5% at the moment on the 10-year Treasury note. So keep an eye on that. And the other one to look for is, despite our weaker uh, metal stocks, a lot of them mostly because of iron ore, we're seeing this Bloomberg Commodity Index still move higher and higher. It's been very, very strong. And as we see here before, we've broken above this big level here, which was quite a resistance level since 2016. We've cleared up through there. We've come back here. It's been supporting above here, which has been a good sign. So the commodities index looks pretty good. And we do know where we've come from. We've come from a lot higher than we are now. So there is certainly potential for this uh, commodity sector goes. We just had a bit of a knock on iron ore. We, we know we're doing well in coal and gas at the moment. So um, it's just a little bit of fear that's sort of affected the market. And BHP is a little bit of an interesting one. I'll have another look at that later on. Okay, so the other, I uh, now want to get into the stocks. First, we're going to go through JB Hi-Fi. Um, and again, we've got our little hat on this one here. We've been watching this one for a while, and we can see again, we're starting to push down towards this S1 again as we test this level. The trend intensity rating is minus nine for JB Hi-Fi. We've got this big hat of resistance here, all these highs and fails at uh, $50, $55, and now we're moving down to the $40 level to test this area here. Now, we don't really want to see this break. If it does, it's probably going to cause a lot more selling and a bit of withdrawal of some buying here. So we get that imbalance of sellers over buyers. So that could cause a bit of a drop. We are seeing the sellers certainly pushing this market down and also the MACD sagging below there. So that's why we've got a trend intensity rating of minus nine. So this is a stay away from the stock at the moment. It's a bit of a toppy pattern. I don't particularly like the look of this uh, if it goes below S1. So. Uh, that's what I'm looking at for JB Hi-Fi. Now, Technology One made a new high recently. It jumped higher. It had a bit of an up and down week this week. I think it's pretty steady this week. But we've seen a good power thrust here. We've got the new high. We've got the entry down here, just above 10 bucks. It's had a power thrust higher. Volume, MACD, all kicked higher. And we know that when we look at this big pattern here, it really is. This pattern has been in for since 2019. This big resistance level. Then we can see these buyers that have just pushed, pushed, pushed hard and hard, and finally they get the break, and it's kicked higher nicely. So, you know, although we've had a bit of a tricky week this week, we wait until stops go off before we do anything, but at the moment, um, everything seems to be okay for technology one. Okay, uh, computer shares another one um, that's sort of, you know, been interesting because um, it had a bit of a rally here uh, for most of 2020, which there was no signals for me to get onto until we got towards the the May this year, and uh, we've got a signal here. It broke this downtrend, it went through the trend reversal level, and above the average, all the signals were good there. Then we got some, uh, we got some uh, the price break, we got some volume, and we got the MACD above zero. So that was good. So there's, there's a price we pay for caution, and a price and, and a price we pay for certainty. So we wait for trends to develop, and when we get that signal, that's when we jump on board. So until we get that signal, we can't. So for computer share, at least we've got it down around just below $15. It's now at $18, so there's $3 in the bank at this stage. And everything looks okay. It's actually been performing quite well, especially throughout this weaker period at the moment. We've got the R1 up here at 2050. It's heading towards that level. I like this sort of thing when it rises on a very good volume. This is kicking higher. So we're getting a trend intensity rating of 10 for computer share, and it's been a good performer for us of late. Okay, now I want to go through to Macquarie Bank, another one which is... Um, we didn't partake for a long time in this one because we never got a trend reversal signal until we got a new high above here. Uh, and then it did dilly-dally around for a little while here. Our stock remained intact. Patience, patience is what we need sometimes. 
and now finally it's really getting on its bike and it's jumped quite suddenly over the last two months quite well. We've seen some reasonable volume, MACD is good, it's above the average and we've got a good break here. So this is just simply a new high trade, trend intensity rating is 9. Where this run will take us, we don't know, we just lift our stop and, uh, and hopefully we stay in for a while. Domain Group also made a new high recently. Um, it's a recent entry, um, it broke here, we've got this little pattern here of high lows, resistance point that we see so often and when it breaks that's when we look for the trigger for the trend to resume itself. We've had a good jump here, it's just steadied off at the moment, I think it's steadied off today a little bit, but the volume has been very good as has the momentum and, and it's above the average. So everything looks good for Domain Group, we've had the break. You know, there's always concerns intra-week. I don't like to play intra-week because of the ups and downs. I just tend to focus on Friday's close, so I don't get so uh, so um, <clears throat> uh, anxious from what happens during the week because it is quite uh, debilitating sometimes, <clears throat> especially for your trading. Okay, so Domain Group is looking, still looking fine, trend intensity rating of 10. One that we've been in for quite a while, probably a bit of a boring stock, but I've actually got quite a lot on this chart, so you might want to freeze this and take a photo of it. But this is Virgin UK, Virgin Money. Okay, we've got the highs up here above $6. And since this period, it's really come all the way down to middle of last year, where we lower lows and uh, lower highs. And it then finally comes down to this low point here at a dollar. And then we get a trend reversal pattern here, okay? We get a trigger above here. We get moving average, above the moving average, volume, MACD, all those signals we look for uh, to give us a signal. So we buy this one back up here, which is, that's what we do. Somebody might ring me up and say, well, it's a bit high today. Well, that's just the way it goes. We just have to do it. We, can't, we don't finesse. Um, so there it is. It's actually up 70% now since, since November, so we're not too concerned about that now. Uh, however, it has continued high, and now it's starting to look like it's starting to break up a very key level. So if we step back here and look at this bigger picture, we've actually got... Um, We've actually got a long-term shift from seller control to buyer control. So you can see the sellers in control of this price as it moves down, down, down. Then all of a sudden we get a, a switch here at the reversal point. Now we're getting an uptrend phase and it now looks the buyers are taking control of this stock. And we can see the volume's in the right position. Momentum, well, it's above zero, which is positive, which means that the price is going upwards. So it's not been, it's, it's slowed down a little bit here, as we can clearly see. And that's resistance level, which is fine. And that's what normally happens, there's a bit of a battle going on, but we've still held in here. As it actually, the price retreats have not been very much. In fact, they've been high, high highs, high lows, I should say. And now we're starting to break through here, so we certainly want to wait for this opportunity that we get a new high here, and it may well move towards R2. So the challenge is here, it's starting to break through. It survived a very tough week this week and last week, and is doing well. So we've jumped on the trend reversal here, the trend has unfolded, and we continue to hang in there until the stop goes off. And as I said before, we look like we're getting a big long-term shift here for Virgin Money, and it's looking very, very interesting at the moment. So keep an eye on that one, um, Virgin UK. The next one, this one I cover in the newsletter on the odd occasion. It's, it's out of the normal uh, 160 stocks I cover, but I've always liked this stock because it's always been be uh, good behaviour. It's always been good, beha well behaved. Um, but it made a new high back here in uh, late last year. Uh, above this resistance point here. And again, this is really unfolded in a very nice way. We get a signal and then the trend, a little bit of a bumpy ride for a couple of months, but then it starts getting on the spike and the, and the pullbacks here are really very short. And we get this, this, most of these impulse moves, drift, impulse, drift, impulse, drift, and that's what we like to see. So we just lift the stop above this one. This is the normal unfolding of a trend. When they behave like this, life is easy. As long as we step back and do what we're told and don't overthink it, or over worry about it, what the price is doing. We just let things happen, raise our stop each week, and uh, then you'll be able to get uh, the benefit of this. This has risen from 350 to 650 since November, so it's been a very good performer. Trend intensity rating is nine, and even now the volume is still very strong. MACD is very strong as it makes it another push higher. So shitty chic, uh, and oversized women's wear, and is doing very, very well indeed for us. Okay, the next one I want to look at is, well, it's an old favourite, <laughs> sort of a favourite. We love to hate it, but Telstra has been an interesting stock for us. We've actually, it actually trends very well, Telstra, which is nice for us because that means we can make lots of money out of it. You can see these trends here. Even if we go back a long way, you can see these beautiful trends that it makes, price trends. But now we're focusing on what we've got now, and that is the double bottom we've had down here, which then, excuse me, then we, we look for a test of the, oh wow, sorry about that. We then look for a test, 
of these four dollars, which we got to, which we know we got there, and now we're tightening the stop, looking for a break to be above here. So there's been quite a lot of uh, news and information about Telstra. The dividend was being cut a little bit, but it's still okay, and the price is advancing very well. In fact, since January, it's risen from three dollars ten to four dollars. So you know, a good uh, twenty-five percent increase in this price here. And if we look at a move above here, in the longer term picture, that would be very bullish. Volume is very good. Momentum is good. It's flattened off a little bit at this top here at R1, but certainly worth hanging on for the opportunity here. Telstra is in a very interesting stock at the moment, trend intensity rating of nine. Okay, now I want to go through two more stocks. One is, you know, BHP, every now and then there is one that we just don't like to see what's happened. And BHP, for all the things we love about it, really just has something has happened to this stock and it's just been dumped by a lot of people. As I said before, you can see all the selling down here. For whatever reason, it's gone from around 53 almost to $35. So it's been dropped about 20 bucks in a few weeks' time, which is a bit of a disaster for BHP. Whether it's the deal with your listing, whether it's the, uh, the selling off of the oil, I don't know. But this is really not recovering, and this is big selling, and momentum's killed it. So this is a situation where we get out, <coughs> and we're happy to just get out and wait to see what happens. Now, you think down here, the price has dropped a long way, it's not going to drop much further, but if your stop goes off, make sure you do it because it could go a lot further. In this case, BHP, BHP has dropped at least another $10 from where we exited. So, uh, and I don't know what's going to happen with this. This is fairly significant. It's going to be hard to recover from this for, for a while because sentiment will have been knocked. So, just watch out for BHP and the opportunities may well come later on. And we know the backdrop is pretty good in the commodity sector, but we just, this is something that is a concern uh, and I'd rather be out and neutral than hanging on and hoping uh, and watching it go lower and lower. So that's BHP. Keep an eye out for the trend intensity rating is minus eight. So that's a, that's a no, no. OK, the other one I want to have a now have a look at and finish on a more positive note, and that is um, CQR. Very simple. We've got this high high lows that have occurred through here and we've got this resistance through here. It's simple trend reversal pattern and we just wait for this to complete above this level here and when it does, that's when we enter the stock and we look for the next resistance up around $5. So it's a very, very simple outlook here. We've got this average. We can see the good volume has been pushing this price hard. MACD is now kicked above zero and starting to expand nicely. So this is, everything is set for this one to have a bit of a rally and we do know some of the property stocks have come into the stock picks of late and this one is another one that's joining the group. So Stockwater does what it does best, focus on new highs and trend reversals only. I don't know what's happening in lots of times in the market and I'd rather be out but until I know, until I have faith in what I do, um, I just stay out. So um, there are plenty of opportunities across the stocks that I cover. There's no hurry to get into everything, the FOMO thing, all that sort of stuff is all a bit crazy. But um, just focus on what you do, just you just need a couple of signals, just a couple of things to, to keep you on track. Okay, so that is the stocks I want to go for. Now I want to go into trading tactics and just talking about the portfolio. Um, uh, firstly, well, last week we went through the, the keys, the process of discipline and money management, how important that is. You know, and all people have different strategies, but most people will have those ingredients built into their mindset, whether they trade fundamentals, technicals, short term, long term, whatever they trade. You must do money management, you must have discipline, you must have processes to work by. So that's what I try and educate people that, that was what they need. Okay, so this week we're going to go through about and then how when you get your stocks, how do you build them into a, a portfolio and keep control of that portfolio so it's working well for you. Okay, so we're going to have a look at that today. So firstly, you have your trade plan, which we've talked about before, about your process, your signals, things like that. It tells you what to buy, so then you know when to buy, which, is a, which makes life a whole lot easier. Okay, the other thing you want to sort of think about is the time frame you trade. You can jostle around, unless you're very clear in what you trade. A lot of people are very... Uh, uh, sort of find it a bit confusing in terms of what I take weekly and I don't have my stops on during the week. If I trade weekly, I look at my stops on Friday and the closing prices and if I hit my stop then I execute on Monday. So I don't have my stops ever on the market. I don't want them on the market. Um, so I just ignore that, that daily noise and I'm a weekly time frame trader. Perspective, my superannuation clients love this sort of stuff so that's really what I'm about. I just have to focus on what I do and I don't try and do everything. Okay. So you now need the structure and external parameters to manage the portfolio of stocks you buy and sell. How many are you going to hold? You're going to hold a lot. How many are you going to cover? How many are you going to look at? There are lots of questions you need to answer. Okay, things you might consider. Okay, 
We're not trying to be everything to everyone. We're trying to control our trading environment and our behaviour, control the things we can. We can't control the market, what, what it does, but we can control a lot of things of what we do which will improve our chances. We just make certain assumptions about what we want to do. So control what you can is a very important part of building your portfolio. Firstly, you will have built a process that you can easily follow that makes your trading decisions for you and keeps you in control of the things you can control. Then you need to decide, now we get into the portfolio side, you need to decide how many stocks are you going to cover. Are you going to look at 2,000 on the index or are you going to look at a couple of hundred or 100 or 50? Okay, number of stocks you're going to hold in your portfolio. How many stocks do you want to have in your portfolio? 5, 10, 15, 20. Uh, 20 is a lot to manage, 5 is not so lot to manage. I find it small, it's simple, nimble, easy to focus, and in the end, with my high conviction approach, they are more profitable. Big is cumbersome, slow, and distractive. Okay, trying to cover all these stocks is hard sometimes. Very easy to drop things off and forget things, okay? So that's just keeping it small and tight. You don't need to make have a big, big portfolio. Then you need to decide, okay, other things within that portfolio. The trend intensity filters, are you going to can relate them to certain trend intensity filters? Sector weights and limits, you don't want to have all your portfolio in the metals sector. You don't have all your portfolios in health. You want a bit of a spread, okay? Execution times and procedure, when are you going to execute? We all think about execution, but we're actually trying to finesse. Should I wait for an hour? Should I not wait for an hour? Should I do it today or tomorrow or whatever? Or should I put a limit on the price? I just do it. When I get a signal on Monday morning, I just execute the trade and do it. No need to try and finesse. It's a weight on your shoulders that you just don't need. And the other things are things like market capitalization filters and other filters that you're going to group that set of, group that set of stocks you're going to cover into. Okay? So you need to set your boundaries of your portfolio. Okay? Because if you don't set your boundaries, you're going to be pulled in every different direction. Okay. Other considerations, managing and adjusting the holding size in relation to portfolio total, total equity growth. So your portfolio will, should, should grow over time. So your, the amount that you buy of each stock will hopefully will grow as well to keep your, um, your holdings in relation to your portfolio. So things like that you need to think about. So building structure and control amid the stock market maze is what you can do. And if you can do that, you will control a lot of those things. Okay, other considerations, don't mix strategies or filters that are likely to conflict. If you try and take a chart with a trend to P-E ratios and all these different things, you're going to find you're going to get a very confusing picture and you're not going to get a very good uh, consistency in you. Our aim is to facilitate odds-based trading, not cause trading paralysis caused by conflict. So that's why I just use price as my only input. I just use a few signals and a stop and it's all very simple and easy. And it makes it very easy to get signals and trade. Okay, so don't look for the holy grail. Design, develop and test a system that makes money. That's the bottom line and then that is checkmate as to how you do it. Okay, so it gives you an idea of what some of the things you need to do if you are going to be consistent and good at what you do. Okay, now... Um, Newsletter is out later on today, if I can get it out in time. Radar's rant will ask what the market does to our minds, but finds there are steps to take to make our life a whole lot simpler and easier. In the micro view, we're going to check out five tourist-related stocks, such as Flight Centre and Qantas. And in Stock Alert, we look at a minnow uh, with promise also in that tourist sector. So we're going to take a look at that. Okay, so now... Um, that's about all I've got for you today. There are a couple of words I'm going to give you. Care, awareness, responsiveness, safety, all these things you need to think about when you're building your portfolio. Things that override everything that I do are stops. They can be driven by anything. They can be driven by fear. They can be driven by news. They can be driven by price. They can be driven by anything. I don't really care. I do bottom-up analysis. I use price to guide me, but whatever drives it, that doesn't matter. The fact that it that is and what is the fact that it is and what is the, of the most relevant to my bank account. So, uh, you know, the market is never wrong. So, you know, the stop is what it is and you've got to listen to it. Okay, don't let your ego mislead you. BS, BHP is probably our latest casualty of hanging on. Every now and then those big stocks will have a big dump and we don't know if it's over yet. Okay, so for those of you hanging on, uh, if you're trend traders, well, you're probably in the wrong way at the moment. Uh, anyway, I'd rather be out and right than in and wrong. Simple as that. Okay? That's my motto. So good luck for your trading week this week. Thanks for listening. I hope you all learned something today and I'll see you all next week. Thank you.